Hello and welcome to LACC TV. I'm Edith Roberto. And I'm Benjamin Katz with our top story of the night. Just one month after he reported the news about Harvey Weinstein's sexual misconduct, 75-year-old news anchor Charlie Rose has now himself been accused of sexual misconduct by eight women. The Harvey Weinstein story continues to bring forth more accusations against the film executive. <coughs> An investigation by the New York Times published last week revealed allegations that Weinstein had been paying off sexual harassment accusers for decades. Today, a New Yorker article online by Ronan Farah shares accounts from several women who've come forth about sexual harassment and assault. Several women have come forth about sexual harassment and assault against uh, Charlie Rose. Following the accusations, Rose was fired from his anchoring positions at both CBS and PBS. Rose has since issued a statement saying that, I deeply apologize for my inappropriate behavior. Rose now joins an ever-growing list of notable and powerful men accused of various forms of sexual misconduct. Meghan Markle is a woman with many talents. From her humble star as a blogger and then as an actress, she will now face her toughest role to date, the wife and royalty as a future duchess. Markle, 36, grew up has spent most of her life in Los Angeles. As an actress, her most famous role is the paralegal Rochelle Zane on USA Network Suits which is now in its seventh season. Megan's very excited for this new chapter in her life, but does not appreciate that the main focus of the media is that she is a mixed race woman. The wedding is to be expected in spring 2018. CNN has fired back at Donald Trump after the president accused the cable news network of being fake news and representing our nation to the world very poorly. Within a few hours of the president's tweet, CNN's public relations team replied saying that it's not CNN's job to represent the U.S. to the world. That's yours. Our job is to report the news. The president has yet to respond back to CNN. A man was arrested on Thanksgiving night after police found a human skull and methamphetamine in his car being pulled over in Northern California. Joshua Davis was a passenger in the car that Los Angeles Camp Police pulled over. Although the officers stopped the car because it driv the driver had passed the stop sign, he instantly recognized David from an earlier encounter when Davis was behind the wheel. Davis was reluctant to show the suspended license, and when he did, the officer became a search of the car. During the search, the officer found methamphetamine hidden behind the gas tank door and a human skull in the bag of the trunk. Davis invoked Miranda rights and refused to explain how to, came, how to come in the possession of the human skull. The Calaveras County Coroner will examine the skull and try to determine an identity. Have you ever considered trying out a vegetarian diet, but don't know where you will uh, find a tasty meal that won't blow your budget? Reporter Jose Bonilla brings us a sneak peek of the vegan lifestyle. We're here at the local Sweet Green. Now this restaurant has garnered a lot of attention for being very vegan friendly. This Chipotle theme style restaurant has many green and vegan options that are at an affordable price and is expanding all over the Southern California region. Manager Marcus Gonzalez had this to say about the establishment. Yeah, 100% yeah, scratch cooking. It is real food. You know, we have a source board. We list our, uh, our farms. Uh, everything that is uh, where they come from, whether it's organic or not organic as possible. And also it's a win-win-win. You know, it's for the community, it's for the people that come in and dine with us, as well as a win for our team members. Real food made by real people. With so many tasty and healthy options, it didn't come as a surprise to find Yadi Hernandez here, a happy sweet green employee who comes on her days off to enjoy these delectable creations. We have a spicy sabzi and we have a shumami bowl. They both come with tofu, so that's vegan. And then our mushrooms that come in the shumami are vegan as well. So we have, you know, whenever you make your own salad, we have tofu or falafel as our vegan options. It is clear that in LA, being health conscious is very important to many of our citizens, especially the younger population. LACC student and proud vegan Maggie Bashiri had this to say. My family think I'm crazy because they're big, like big meat eater and everything like that. And so when I like went back home to go visit, they're like, what? You don't eat meat? You're crazy. You know, what? you're just it's just a fate. They think it's a fate that I'll go back to eating meat. But uh, most of my friend like understand, but like they're not vegan. You know, some of them are interested in wanting to know why. Some of them are like, are right, you crazy? Some of them are like, oh, that's cool. That's for you. You know what I mean? But, you know, they don't like condemn me for it or anything like that. It's okay. just like a lifestyle. 
Thank you so much for that great report, Jose. So what do you think, Edith? Would you ever consider going uh, vegan for a change? I actually tried once uh, for about three hours and then I found myself in a McDonald's drive-thru. Well, that's understandable. Everyone has the right to choose the lifestyle and diet that suits them best. Here at LACC TV, we like to take a peek into the lifestyle and learn about inspiring people in LA. Tony McNair joins us for a backstage chat with Kid Jove, a music producer in Los Angeles. Let's take a peek backstage. Hello, and welcome to Backstage Chat. I'm Tony McNair. And today we have an up and coming spotlight of our producer, Kid Joe. Hey, Kid Joe, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. Um, how did you first get into producing music? Well, originally I started off as an artist and a songwriter, and this was back in high school. And I really decided I was trying to find beats basically to fit the songs that I was writing, and mm -hmm. it was almost impossible to find a great vibe or mood to match. And so I decided to start creating my own, which I, I sucked at first, like I was terrible. And I didn't understand fully the DAW that I was using, and it's digital audio workstation. So mm -hmm. I was making beats out of that, and I was terrible. And it just took, it took time to develop my sound and become better. So do you have any training? Like, did you ever like go to school for music or anything like that? No, I've learned everything myself. I'm self-taught. Um, I've decided to just put in the time and the work and the hours to mm -hmm. figure it out. Okay. Um, can you describe briefly the process of working with an um, a artist in the studio? Well, it always varies. Uh, different artists, they're, they're a different, all artists are at different levels with the way they work, so I find it easier to have fun in the studio, to get them to relax and to be comfortable, and it's okay for them to mess up, and we might say something that might sound corny, but we, we just have fun, and that's how you create authentic vibes. That's how you create timeless music. Okay. Um, is there any artists that you would like to work with like that you can get a real groove with or whatever? Right now, I, I don't have a specific artist. I like to be open with my music. I like to work with different up and coming artists, writers and other producers just to create vibes. Cause we don't, you don't know who's gonna be the next superstar. You don't, you don't know that, so. That's true, that's true. Um, what projects are you working on right now? Um, right now, I'm working with my artist, uh, Sammy Saya, on her EP called Feels. Um, so we're, I don't have a date yet, but we're, we're working hard on that. And I have another artist, um, he's also an actor, his name, his name is Chad Chambers. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working on his project, and I have a couple mm -hmm. other artists back home that I'm still sending beats to. So do you have any um, of the music from your artists you have here? that we can listen to? Yeah, I have um, Sammy Sayers Like That, which I wrote and produced, and okay. it's featuring my friend Misha Banga. She's from the Bay. So do you have any advice for up and coming producers like to get them on the same road that you're going on that are trying to follow their dream? Yeah, I, I believe you should just stay humble, always stay humble and always attempt to learn anything from whoever it is, whether they're young, old, just starting off. I mean, I'm just 23. So just to learn it, learn from any situation Go to, when you're in a session, learn from the engineer, see what the engineer is doing, ask questions, and just apply it. Okay. Um, so what can we expect from you in 2018? Well, a whole bunch of new, like I'm rebranding myself, um, a name change. Uh, oh. I wouldn't say more of a lane change, because mostly I've been doing R&B songs, and I have uh, like 12, 15 songs out right now, and 
I'm attempting to just go different routes, just hit the pop, hit the EDM, future bass, just just get out there and just really experiment with my sound. Okay. Okay, sounds good, sounds good. Um so let me get this straight. You are gonna so you're gonna stick with the producing right now and later on you're gonna kinda just feel your way into being an artist. Yeah, I think it's it's easier to not easier because this production is really like a creative thing, but I find it easier for me to just jump into the production lane, the producer lane, and songwriting lane because it's billions of artists out here. It's billions of producers, but okay. you still have that chance to really be creative with it. And I've always had that like production side for me. I've whether we were in the studio working on songs, I would always suggest things and orchestrate the song, basically, okay. which I love doing that from beginning to end to Excellent. have something custom and new and unique. Sounds good. Well, keep up the good work, and um, thank you for joining us, um, chatting with us. It was really great. I enjoyed the music, and hopefully you'll come back and see us soon. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you so much for that backstage chat, Tony. Now stick around. After the break, we will have another backstage chat with an extraordinary opera singer. Welcome back. How was your Thanksgiving, Ben? My mother makes the best pumpkin pie. Oh, well, it's good. Um, it's funny you say that because it is actually my mother who makes the best pumpkin pies. <laughs> <laughs> Coming home after 39 years in prison being wrongfully accused, Craig Coley, a now 70-year-old charge of a crime he didn't commit in 1978, he was accused of killing his ex-girlfriend and her four-year-old child. Detective Mike Mender, of the Semi Valley Police Department, who was friends with his father, Wilson Coley, reopened the case in 2015 with a clemency petition because he had a strong feeling that Craig wasn't, was wrongfully accused. It was later found that evidence that was tampered with and new technologies in DNA testing found that Coley's innocence for the murder. This just in, Charles Manson has been pronounced dead. This is horrible news, said nobody. Have you ever thought about why things are the way they are? How each person has a unique perspective on life and how they approach it? John Thomas explores those very questions on campus life at LACC. I'm John Thomas. I'm going to ask the question that's often thought of but seldom heard. Why division? Just off the top of your head, do you believe that God created the different races? No. I don't have a religious standpoint of how humans came to be. No. Of course. Okay. Do you believe that? I think, yeah. You? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think like our soul has like a gender or race. I am not religious. I do. Okay. I do? Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, why do you believe that? I believe there's one God, but no one knows who he is. Everybody has their certain opinion on who God is. Mm -hmm. So I, in, in terms, I believe of every single religion. Because nature and spiritual is run together. I, there's science, there's human does research. Because, I mean, it has to be diverse. I mean, there's so many different places in the world. Like, throughout generations, we just start getting darker depending on where. Would you help somebody that's in your race before you would help somebody that's not in your race? I, I, no. I would help any human being if I could. Oh, no, no. I would like to help people. Whoever needs me, I'll just go help and help them. I don't really, oh, give it, okay. I don't really care. If I can help someone in need, it doesn't matter what race they are, I'll help them if I can. Probably, but I, I wouldn't say, like, just depending on color. My own race first. Okay. Yeah, because everybody, everybody would be, do the same thing for their own particular race. So. No. It's, Help it's everybody. I mean, we all got to turn it in at the end of the day. It doesn't matter to me, either one. If I have to, I'll do both at the same time. <laughs> um, 
it wouldn't matter to me. I would help anybody, whether they're white, Asian. I wouldn't like, I will help pretty much anyone. Yeah, I'm like, just okay, a helpful okay. person. Would you be quicker to help a woman in danger than you would a man in danger? Mm. I'd probably be quicker to help a kid, honestly. Uh, of course, I mean, you're, you're always supposed to protect women and children, no matter yeah. what. Again, I see, I both see them equally. <laughs> hmm. I might. Okay, now that, I would probably help the woman oh, first, because, okay, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. You would? I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Depending on which one's, like, more in danger than... No. No. No? no. Okay, That's great. spice. <laughs> oh, um, well, no, I want to help everybody. LACC TV, this is John Thomas reporting. Ben, what are your thoughts on helping a person? I always say a friend in need is a friend indeed. And if you would like to share your thoughts on John's topic, you can reach out on social media at our Facebook page, LACC TV. Next up, Stefanie Rush joins us backstage for a chat with Oprah singer and multi-talented musician Patrick Sostowski. Welcome to our backstage chat. Our guest today is a wonderful opera singer, actor, artist and inspiring person Patrick Stalinsky. Patrick, tell us uh, about your music career and how it all started. Well, my music career started when I was 27 years old. And it started by a lady from uh, Michigan Opera Theater that contacted me. She needed a quick understudy to be able to uh, learn a song quickly. And she knew that I had the ability of doing that. My first song that I learned was the Flater Mouse, and I had two weeks to learn it, memorize it, and be able to perform it. Um, it was very interesting, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it. I think that that's when I fell in love with opera. Up until then, I really didn't really even think about opera. And that's nice. So what do you like the most about the opera? I believe that the thing that I like most about opera is the ability to communicate with people in a story, to be able to see those people in the front row and look into their eyes and know that you're actually communicating with them in, in, in getting them to buy into the story that you're trying to tell. That's nice. Patrick, I also know that you have three CDs and you're working on a new one. Uh, so tell us about the CDs. Well, I have three CDs. My first one is an inspirational CD. My second CD is a Christmas CD. And my third CD is kind of a pop CD, something that I've been working on and, and um, something that I was experimenting with. Uh, I really enjoyed doing them. And, um, I'm, now I'm working on my fourth CD. That sounds good. So what's your career goals? Well, my career goal is to, um, I'd like to feed homeless people. That's my, my main goal, is to be able to get to a point of where I have the ability to make enough income that I can, I can share it with homeless people, get them off the streets, try to help them as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So Patrick, uh, can we hear the sample of your song? Sure. Let's hear it. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. But I know I'm going to be changing that too. When I'm back on top, back on top in June. I said that's that That's such life. a beautiful song, Patrick. Uh, where, where do you perform? Where can we see you performing? Well, I uh, am at San Fernando Mission Church every Sunday. I'm, uh, I'm a paid uh, music director over at San Fernando Church. I get many people that uh, will come to uh, a mass and they'll stop me afterwards and they'll say, 
this was more like a concert than it was a, a, a mass, so I enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, and I'm also working on something with a, a lady from Norway right now. Uh, she's a classical soprano, and I'm a, you know, we're going, we're working on a concert series together. We wish you all the best in this, but uh, what's inspired you? What inspires me? Uh, each song has its own inspiration. Every, every song has its own story. And trying to find the inspiration or the story for every single song is, is what really inspires me. Um, you know, like for instance this one here. It, life, it's all about life. It's, that's life, you know? Everybody's always trying to uh, knock you down, it seems like anyhow. And uh, you need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that you can get back up and just keep on going. That's such a good advice, Patrick. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was Patrick Stalinsky today with us. And uh, we'll see you after break. Uh, follow us on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you for the interview, Stefana. And we'll be right back after this quick break. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back, and thanks again for sticking around with us. Now, back to the news. A mandatory burn ban has been issued for Southern California due to poor air quality. The ban was issued in response to Los Angeles reaching an air quality index of 119, which is well within the levels of being unhealthy for sensitive groups. High levels of air pollution can increase the risk of bronchitis and asthma, in addition to causing eye, nose, and throat inflammation. The best way to protect yourself, it is recommended that you limit outdoor activities during uh, this time until the air quality improves. Tired of the president? Tom Steyer is calling for Trump's impeachment. He believes the president has violated the Constitution by his actions related to the Justice Department investigation into whether Russia interfered in the 2016 election. Tom Steyer is a passionate advocate of clean energy and has been one of the most vocal opponents of the proposed Keystone XL oil pipeline. Mega donor and billionaire env environmentalist defended his 20 million national television and digital ad campaign, saying to sit here and wait doing absolutely nothing is the wrong thing to do. The American people want this man in peach. Trump wrote back on his Twitter about the situation on October 27th. Wacky and total unhinged Tom Sawyer, who has been fighting me and make my American great again agenda from the beginning, never wins elections. If you're on board with Tom, sign up at needtoimpeach.com. Jose Bonilla joins us with some tips on fun events in LA coming up this month. Thank you for joining us, uh, Jose. My pleasure. Hello. It's great to be in the holiday season once again. And during this season, we are blessed to live in a place where we really know how to celebrate and enjoy the holidays. Let's start with the classic ballet, The Nutcracker by the Los Angeles Ballet. This city's own holiday tradition begins December 9th and will go through the 31st. Tickets are as cheap as $25 per person 
And the best part of it is that we can all enjoy this great piece of art in multiple venues in Glendale, Hollywood, Redondo Beach, and UCLA. Next, if you want to bring your little ones for a fun winter day under the warm California sun, then you will definitely want to come to the boat parade and firework event at Marina del Rey. This upcoming Saturday, December 9th, children will get to play in the snow at Snow Wonder in Burton Chance Park at noon to 6 p.m. After that, the whole family will be able to enjoy the fireworks at 6, followed by the Marina del Rey Holiday Boat Parade that circles the main channel from 6 to 8. The best part of it all is, yes, you guessed it, it is free. And finally, for all you Star Wars lovers, come and enjoy the lightsaber battle. This free event in LA is for all ages. All the best R2-D2 and Leia impersonators are going to be in Pershing Square from 8 to 11 p.m. So come dress properly and bring your own lightsaber. You can also buy one once you arrive. Don't forget, if you um, belong to the dark side, please represent, because this event will definitely be out of this world. Thank you so much for that report, Jose. You're welcome. Now, you at home might be wondering about this amazing studio we have here at LACC. The Dick Clark Studio TV is a newly renovated, state-of-the-art broadcast facility in the heart of LA. Carmen Cacophony has the inside scoop of the exciting updates happening here. I'm here at Los Angeles City College where the new Dick Clark Studio is due to open this spring. Let's check it out. We have a wonderful facility at LACC. My name is Professor Jen Vaughn. I'm an associate professor in the cinema and TV department at LACC and my background is in sports broadcasting and news production. The studio is named after Dick Clark because Dick Clark Productions is very involved with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and the renovation for this studio wouldn't have been possible without a generous grant from the HFPA. It's really beneficial in our department to have two studios. In the Studio B, which we teach our beginning equipment classes on, it's great for students to learn the foundation. They can learn all the principles of a multi-cam TV production, how to use a switcher, an audio mixer, cut between three cameras, use a character generator system, and kind of get their feet wet. And then as they move through the courses, they can really specialize in what their interests are, whether it's graphic, directing, camera work. Now they can learn on a jib. Now they can learn graphics that are going to be the same type of stuff we use in a production environment. I believe uh, the new studio would help me with my career goals due to me trying to be on television production and also just production itself, you know, outside work. I'm excited. And what I'm mostly excited about is learning experience. You know, I'll get to work in the studio. We get to see how the graphics work, animation. It helps me with my ability to look for employment. Tell them I got some set of skills I can bring to the table. People are accessing media in different ways. You know, we're watching it on our phones, we're watching it on our laptops. We're not just going straight to the TV, but we're going to social media platforms. It's where we're getting our news and it's also where we're feeding our news. So now we'll have full social media integration with our Inception platform and it's going to be a really great training ground for our students. There's no prerequisites, there's no hoops and loops to jump through. You're getting a hands-on training experience and within two semesters you can have a certificate and have a skill that you can get hired for. The LACC Cinema and TV Department is so grateful for the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, the LACC Foundation and all of their support, the support from people in the industry, alumni who've gone through and are now in the industry continue to give back, not just monetarily but their time and their energy and their mentorships. So we're really grateful for those connections that we've made in the department and we want to continue building those. From the new Dick Clark TV studio in Hollywood, I'm Carmen Cacophony. Thanks for watching us and follow us on Facebook at LACC TV. And watch our programs at YouTube at LACC TV channel. Good night everyone. <laughs>